Hi, my name is Norman. Welcome back. So today we are inside my living room and well, as you can tell, I printed these two monkeys here. One is here and the other one is over here. Before we start this, I'm pretty sure many of you will be interested where to get these monkeys and unfortunately they aren't free. I'll link it down below where you can buy them. Um, this is a very, very large model, as you can tell, 70 centimeters or something, I don't know. So you've got to split it into multiple pieces to have, uh, to be able to print it. Yeah, if you want to know where to get these monkeys, this one and also this one, look in the link down below in the description. So now back to business. Basically, I wanted to talk to you about these lampshades. I designed it by myself. And I think it looks all right from the front. But from the sides, because my build plate isn't quite big enough, um, you can tell it's ugly. I don't know. I don't like the view from the side. I don't know how to say I don't like the gap because, you know, it's, it's clearly visible, but it doesn't look very intentional. So basically to fix this problem, so you got two ways. Number one, get a bigger printer so that I can print this thing in one piece instead of in two pieces. Or number two, design a new one with intentional gaps. But okay, well, I am well prepared, so I already designed the thing. But of course, as always, I'm gonna walk you through the design process, and if there's something interesting, I'm gonna mention it. So we're gonna roll the timeline all the way back to the beginning. So this is the first sketch. Uh, looks like nothing because it is nothing. Basically, uh, this is when I designed the base, so it gets extruded. This was the first design, as you can tell, two halves. Uh, we're gonna change that later on the, oh, there we go boring 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 and now here comes an interesting part so this is the thread fusion 360 has a built-in thread tool but unfortunately um that doesn't really help look here this is one of those things which the monkeys hold in their hand where the lamp gets screwed in and it has a thread outside. And there are wonderful tools out there uh, which can measure these threads, but I have no idea um, how to measure it. So basically I took the caliper, measured um, you know, the diameter of course, and also um, the distance between, I think it was five or six. And then I took exactly that measurement and applied it into my software. I knew um, diameter 28 millimeters and I knew uh, I estimated that in one inch it took 12 revolutions, more or less. So because I thought, I, I'm not sure if this is metric or not, but I, I thought just like two and a half centimeters, 2.54, uh, counted up to 12, seemed about right. Unsurprisingly, it's not perfect, but it does work actually. It has a very, very good side effect because it's only sort of matching with the thread here. If you have enough revolutions wound up on the, the inner thread here, um, it gets stuck. That way you can't screw the base here past a certain point. You're gonna see that later. So um, this is how I made the thread. I'm gonna move it into a component and all that. So blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Move it down. Uh, make the base a little bit bigger and cut the thread to size. Um, now is the next sketch, which is um, now I'm removing that part basically and adding the new uh, five section. Um, you know, I could have just used a parametric design, but I had a lot of iterations actually. Um, I, I didn't quite remember where were the steps, so it was a lot easier for me to just redo them rather than finding them again. So um, now we got our five, five socket base, made a lot of space, another sketch. Now it gets interesting. Look at that. So this is the big sketch. This is basically the side revolving profile of a petal. Let's call it a petal. I don't know. Actually, it, it's supposed to be here somewhere already. Yeah, this is one of the base petals. So um, you can see I have a small diameter here. Um, after 50% get the diameter gets larger um, just to have the petals opening yeah that's just what I thought would be cool so I use this sketch profile here to get you know this petal and the rest is history more or less more or less history because well this step here is basically just including well, including uh, the lamp for reference uh, we don't really need that 
uh, but the step which is more important is what happened here right so um, something between here and here gets very interesting so we're gonna remove that one again um, this is a very very cool tool I'm gonna show you um, the website is called varonata.com um, you can also click down below in the description if you want to. So, um, let's say I have this petal shape here and I can just take it, save it as an STL. Oh, right, yeah, I need, to, I need to enable it again. So now it's visible, now I can save it as STL, now we're talking. Okay, and there we go. Now it's here. Once we uploaded it, uh, we have a couple of options. Um, of course, we want STL. Um, I found out that having less holes and standard thickness of layer works best. Yeah, of course, I highly recommend experimenting with the values because that's a lot of fun. So you press, you hit that start button and then you're gonna wait. And then you get your finished Voronized model. And that's, that's pretty cool, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Waiting, waiting, waiting. So, and there you have it. You, you, you will have, have two different download options. One is the, the regular thing and one is a reduced thing. I always stick with the regular one with, because the reduced has less um, polygons. So that's a really, really cool tool. Um, I think it's also awesome that it's free. I highly recommend uploading some designs and just messing with them because that's, it gives such a cool organic look that's love it. Now we got that sorted. Um, I imported the mesh here and here we have one little problem of Fusion 360 because usually when you want to print an object you can just right click on it save it as, save as STL and then you know you can save it as STL and print it uh, but the problem is let's say I have this component here which is the petal and uh, which is the petal um, the Voronice petal now and the thing which slides into the slot um, usually I just right click here, save as STL, okay, desktop, and there you go. Notice something's missing, that's right, uh, the entire mesh isn't included. I don't know, uh, maybe I'm just a noob because I definitely am, but um, that's kind of annoying, right? But the only way which I found to actually export the entire thing including the mesh is to hide everything else save it and then click here on file export and there you go STL export you know in theory it sounds exactly the same as right click and save as STL but in practice it uses the cloud renderer and then it takes time to you know it takes ages to to export i don't know why it takes so long but you know it's free so i i have absolutely no rights to complain about that but this is the only way which i know how to export stl files including meshes out of fusion 360 that's i don't know maybe maybe there's a smarter way so please let me know down below in the comments or i could just google it but that would be boring right so of course we're going to unhide all these petals again because they're wonderful and we're going to show the base because yeah that's the that's how it's supposed to look right save again because we want the preview to look nice and then there we are but yeah of course you guys know me i am well prepared so i already printed it this is the base this is a petal and these are four more petals, so five. You get the point. Let me show you what I meant. So this is the thread, you know, lamp goes in here and um, because these threads only sort of align, it gets stuck. Like, I, I seriously, I didn't plan this, but it's, it's pretty much perfect. Look at that. It's almost, look at that, it's almost flush with the top so um, it would be I mean I could force it a little bit more in but that's totally fine um, so this thing goes nowhere and I, I don't know this is like you know it's not a bug it's a feature but it worked surprisingly well so that's pretty cool right so there's also another problem with the sphere which is assembly and disassembly so I'm 
more or less forced to to break it now I think maybe I can maybe I am able to remove it but I'm not sure come on okay nothing broke great Okay, it's broken. <laughs> because I wanted to be able to change the bulb in case, you know, it breaks or something, I don't know. And well, in order to access the bulb, I needed to be able to, to you know, slot them in and remove these um, half spheres. Now I can access the bulb and get it out of the way. And then I can get the rest out of the way. So we got to rewind to the very beginning of the video where I said I could buy a bigger printer to be able to print it in one piece. Of course this wouldn't work because there's no way to get a closed sphere around that thing except I would increase that diameter here so that I can screw in the bulb and then just put the sphere around it like, like that. That wouldn't look that nice because this one is actually already too big. To look nice right so this is something uh, which you need to take into consideration <laughs> when you're designing lampshades that you also need to access the bulb once in a while maybe maybe not but if you have to you're happy you would be happy if you can do it without disassembling while trying to pull out this piece here you can see or maybe not see the light makes it very hard but here it's broken so with the new design we won't have that problem because we can access the bulb anytime from the top. I am going to glue these things in. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't go anywhere actually. Because yeah, maybe we don't even need glue. But what we got to do is sand down a little bit. Because um, reasons. Let's just say uh, when printing with resin printers you get a little bit of an elephant's foot. That's just due to technical things so um, I'm getting rid of that you know people who, who, who understand what I'm talking about right now um, probably think yeah but here and yeah you can do that but basically that's all I did there's just a little bit of leftover enough to get in the way here because it's a very very tight fit so there you go now we can push it in hopefully I actually haven't tried it yet but this doesn't feel very promising to be honest Good thing is, I probably won't need any glue. <laughs> Bad thing is, I'm probably going to break it as well. Whoa. Okay. So it's a really, really tight fit, as you can tell. Tighter than it actually should be. Because I added more than enough tolerances. I don't know how this is this happening here. Because actually I, I, I plan to use a lot more tolerance and then glue it up. But for some reason that didn't happen. Probably got lost uh, in the process, which I told you that I was too lazy to, to... And then I redid it and I ended up messing it up. Oh my god, I'm going to break one of those probably. So, by the way, um, this is a resin print. Um, I haven't mentioned in the channel that I now own a resin printer. But I do own a resin printer, now you know. And um, funny, cool thing with a resin printer is that the duration of the print doesn't really matter of the volume, but of the height. You know, of course, the height is also very, very connected to the volume. But um, what, I, what I wanted to say is that basically um, it doesn't really matter how many, it really depends on the height of the print instead. So I'm gonna need a little bit of glue because I broke it, but this one was tough, I don't know. It means that, you know, one piece of those takes as long as three pieces or five pieces, depending on how many you can print on the build plate. Oh, I'm gonna break it. Good thing is I won't need any glue, right? So what I was trying to explain while almost messing this up is the printer prints one layer at a time. So it doesn't really matter how large the layer is. It always takes seven seconds in my case per layer including the up and down movements, a little bit more like 10 seconds per layer. It doesn't really matter how, how busy the layer is. With this print, it takes exactly the same time to print three at once 
or one at once or five at once. There was enough space, there would be enough space to have five pieces or at least four pieces. God, I just uh, I, I wanted to make some educational video for you guys so that you know what to think about when printing. But I dropped it. So um, this thing is super duper fragile. It broke right here in the weakest spot. There's no way I can glue this up. I think. Probably not. Gonna try it though. But first let me finish that sentence here. So I was printing the first run with five pieces in one build plate. And they were so close to each other that one failed for some reason and it took two more with it. So I had five pieces. I was hoping for to get five pieces and I ended up with having two. So for the next one I, um, you know, I changed the layout a little bit. Now we have three, but three guaranteed and if one breaks it's not going to mess up with the other ones. So um, that's something you need to keep in mind. Maybe, maybe not. When printing with resin printers, yeah, it's a little bit different. But in general, in my opinion at least, I think they are a little bit easier to use than filament printers. So, um, luckily we have like almost no chipping. There are no parts missing almost. Like just here a tiny little bit is missing, which flew somewhere, I don't know, I can't, can't find it. So this means that we have almost 100% surface contact. So I'm going to try it. Um, unfortunately, it's very, very small. I don't think you can, you can watch me live, but um, I can try it and then it's gonna, probably gonna fall down in a year or so. But until then, super glue. Gonna save me a little bit of hours, extra printing time. Actually, the missing part here is so small that the super glue is almost bridging it. That's great. Let's see how super the super glue is. It's actually more or less working, right? I can feel it already grabbing, so I'm, I'm pretty sure, positive, it's going to glue. And I just realized there's also another crack. So I'm just going to give, give it a little dab and give it a little bit more. Luckily, we were able to fix it and you can see from the white stains. I don't know um, these these types of glues always have a, a fume coming out uh, Staining surfaces white. That's a little downside, but this glue is just crazy So so I'm fine with that as long as the shape the general shape works I don't know I'm just going to show it to you and you're gonna tell me if you can see it on camera or not Hopefully this is not going to bother anyone and especially not the monkey okay so now careful careful don't drop it again and now the magic i can install and uninstall the bulb without disassembling the entire thing which is a game changer really cool get a little bit more so, and of course, this is an overpriced smart bulb, so I can press, I can light it up with a press of a button. I was kind of afraid that the, the, the petal flower-ish thing would be a little bit too big. But to be honest, I think, I think it's look, it looks really cool. So, and there you have it, thumbnail. <laughs> um, I think I, I love it. I think that's a really, really cool lamp. I mean, these monkeys have been an eye catcher inside my living room since they were installed. But now with the lamp, I think number one, the bulb doesn't blind you anymore when you're watching TV. And number two, it's a little bit more of an eye catcher right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.